Today, Dubé will pretend as if gravity acts in a way that it doesn't, that sailors use a flat earth to navigate, and that getting loss is somehow related to the shape of the earth. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the flat earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubé 32. If gravity is credited with being a force strong enough to hold the world's oceans, buildings, people, and atmosphere stuck to the surface of a rapidly spinning ball, then it is impossible for gravity to also simultaneously be weak enough to allow little birds, bugs, and planes to take off and travel freely, unabated in any direction. Let's talk about gravity. Now, I will be talking about gravity using an analogy. Warning to all flat earthers, these are analogies, they are not literal. Gravity does not literally work like this. This is a bird. Since this bird is only made up of one ball, there is only one link between the ball and the earth. This link is gravity. It connects the bird to the earth. Since there is only one link between the bird and the earth, the bird is rather light, and gravity can only use one link to hold it down. The bird doesn't have to struggle much to move around, since it only has to fight one gravity link. This is a cat. This cat is made up of two balls. Since this cat is two balls, it has two gravity links to the earth. What this means is that the cat weighs twice as much as the bird because it has more gravity links to the earth. This cat also struggles more to fight the gravity links since it has to fight two gravity links. This is a building. It is made up of six balls. It has more balls, so it has more gravity links. This is a mountain. It is made up of more balls, so it has more gravity links. This is an ocean. It has orders of magnitude more gravity links than the bird. As our creatures, buildings, and oceans are made up of more and more balls, they have more and more gravity links to the earth. As the objects have more gravity links, they will also weigh more. And since they have more gravity links, they struggle more to move than creatures made of less balls. That is why lifting up something with less mass is easier than lifting up something with more mass. More mass means it weighs more and gravity holds onto it more. So an ocean and a building will be held down to the earth with more force since it has more mass. Again, this is why they weigh more as well. This was just a long-winded way for me to say the things that have more mass weigh more, and the things that weigh more require more energy to move. Last time we talked about Newton's first law, which states that an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon. When Dubé says things like, gravity holds down the ocean, the question to ask him is, what force is pushing us away? The answer is centrifugal force, but it's not really a force. It's more of a consequence of us living on a moving frame of reference. So, how fast are we moving away from the spinning Earth? Well, not very fast. As it turns out, we are only accelerating away from Earth at 0 0.03 meters per second squared. That's not very fast. For comparison, objects fall to Earth at 9.8 meters per second squared. This acceleration is caused by gravity. If you don't want to call it gravity, that's fine. I will, but you call it whatever you want. Either way, this acceleration can be independently verified by anyone with a ruler and a stopwatch. So, regardless of whether you think that the Earth is flat or round, you can verify both the acceleration of objects as they fall and the centrifugal force that would exist on a rotating body the size of the Earth at the given period of rotation. This is just a long-winded way of saying, go check your math for yourself if you think I'm just making shit up. Proof 33 is the same as 32, just talking about swimming through water rather than flying through the air. It also relies entirely on not bothering to understand how gravity works. 34. Ship captains in navigating great distances at sea never need to factor the supposed curvature of the Earth into their calculations. 
Both plane sailing and great circle sailing, the most popular navigation methods, use plane, not spherical trigonometry, making all mathematical calculations on the assumption that the Earth is perfectly flat. If the Earth were in fact a sphere, such an errant assumption would lead to constantly glaring inaccuracies. Plane sailing has worked perfectly fine in both theory and practice for thousands of years, however, and plane trigonometry has time and again proven more accurate than spherical trigonometry in determining distances across the oceans. I don't know anything about sailing, and neither does Dubay. To demonstrate how little Dubay knows about sailing, let's look up great circle sailing. Since Dubay states that this method is both accurate and popular, the first entry that we see states, Great circle sailing is used for long ocean passages. For this purpose, the Earth is considered a perfect spherical shape. Therefore, the distance between two points on its surface is an arc of the great circle containing two points. Dubay, the very concept that you stated is accurate and popular, and that it demonstrates that sailors use a flatter to navigate, has as an assumption that the Earth is a perfect sphere. You couldn't even be bothered to Google the very navigation method that you say proves the Earth is flat. 35. If the Earth were truly a globe, then every line of latitude south of the equator would have to measure a gradually smaller and smaller circumference the farther south travel. If, however, the Earth is an extended plane, then every line of latitude south of the equator should measure a gradually larger and larger circumference the farther south traveled. The fact that many captains navigating south of the equator, assuming the globular theory, have found themselves drastically out of reckoning, more so the farther south traveled, testifies to the fact that Earth is not a ball. Let me rephrase this proof in order to convey the complete idiocy of it. Sometimes people get lost Therefore, the Earth is flat. No joke, that is what this proof is. People aren't perfect. People don't perfectly navigate every time. Even today, with modern GPS that can give you a location down to the foot, people get lost. This is a human error, not a map error. Proof 36 is the same as 35, just using James Clark Ross as the source for the person who is getting lost. 37 is the same as 35, except using Charles Wilkies as the person getting lost. 38 is the same as 35, except using a quote from Reverend Thomas Miller, because Dubé thinks that quoting people somehow gives his stupid proof more validity. Next time, we'll have a special guest who will show us how Dubé struggles with simple math, and we'll talk about how to circumnavigate Antarctica.